in every game, every possession, I'm playing to win a national championship. Every year is a new year. Right in, good. This year, we're as focused as ever. We're the type of team with the mindset, you fall off the horse, you get right back on. Diggins back to load up the glass and in. I think that's what Coach McGar wanted. She wanted that fire back. She's striving for that masterpiece. We're trying to paint it for her. All right, let's get some film. I think I figured out what our problem is. We're at a little bit of an impasse here between our expectation levels. My expectation is that in every game, every possession, I'm playing to win a national championship. The Fighting Irish are national champions in 2001. Notre Dame, Notre Dame, Notre Dame is the national champion. Well, I think you have to set the bar high. I think that is our goal, to win a national championship. For the second straight year, Notre Dame moves on to the national championship game. If you don't play that way and practice that way every day, you can't get to that moment and suddenly turn it on. It's got to be turned on the entire year. She definitely strives for perfection. You know, she's striving for that masterpiece. And um, we're trying to paint it for her. When I look at our offense, I see a team that is capable of great vision, great movement. Notre Dame moves so well without the basketball. I mean, smart players, backdoor cuts. Backdoor to a channel off the glass, good. Pick and roll. Skyler Diggins back to ace off the glass, up and in. The kind of offense that people look at and they go, dang, you guys are so fun to watch. Three on two, Diggins back to load up the glass, and in. What we can do on offense when we are on is fabulous. Got it into ace back door, came back off the glass door. We are like poetry in motion. When we are clicking on all cylinders, it is beautiful. <laughs> that masterpiece we were kind of talking about painting, that's what that looks like. When we play the game, our goal is national championship. <clears throat> that's the kind of caliber of basketball I want to play. But we're not playing our potential. I think that's what Coach McGraw wanted. She wanted that fire back. And being in February, we need that. We can't be getting lackadaisical this late in the season. February is the toughest month of the year. It is an incredible grind. It's mentally very challenging for the team because you got to the point in the season where you know you're in postseason, you're feeling pretty good about where you're going to be, you just want the tournament to come. You go into each game trying to just get it done, get it over with, instead of really working on continuing to get better. Come on, let's get better today. Let's go. Come on, game speed. Let's go, game speed. Come on, Sky. Good. Don't overplay. Good. That's side, right? It's a defense. Right in. Good. Full speed, Ace. There you go, Ace. Good job. Two things that I love about Coach McGraw is, first of all, she's blunt. There's like five people Ace, at your position in the country that, that a lot of people think are pretty good. And the only difference between them and you is they're willing to go down there and be a beast on the block. If you went down there and were a beast on the block, you, you would be in that conversation. And you need to be. And I think that's the one thing probably missing maybe from our game and maybe from your game. She knows what she wants, how she wants it, and she will tell you that. That's why I ask a lot of questions, just to make sure there's no gray area. Try and go all the way to the baseline to scream or wait till like they come start dribbling up. She knows what she wants, yeah. and I want to make sure that I know exactly what she wants from each individual play. Yeah, yeah. So I just go halfway. Against Villanova this week, Coach wants me to make sure that I'm playing to my potential. Go inside some so we can get Ace on the block. She knows that I can do the elbow jumper, the elbow drive, but she wants me to take some hook shots inside, um, get some pick and rolls going, and so I need to make sure that I'm doing that within the key and uh, being that post presence that, we, that we've been lacking lately. Because Villanova's going to pack it in, and if we can throw the ball inside, we can win the game. White, they're going to pack it in. Stay in the lane. Playing against Villanova is probably the most stressful time of the year besides the tournament for Coach McGraw. I hate playing Villanova. It is a, it is a challenge to my patience. I, I like to go. I like fast paced. I want to score 80 points. I want a lot of excitement. I, I want the crowd into the game. I want every play to be spectacular. And they make us walk. You guys are going to walk it up. Use the whole shot clock if you don't have a wide open shot. 
It's just take it real slow. So it's a, it's a real challenge for me to get the game uh, you know, at a pace that we want. So we're trying to go, and we need to set good screens and transition. So to win there, even if you win by two, you feel like it's, a, it's an amazing victory because the, the way they play is just so different from everybody else. Yes! Good work, good work! Good job. You're good to live. Atlantic Aviation flagship 4436. She'll be there to pick up Notre Dame uh, women's basketball team. Villanova is probably the most stressful for her because she's in front of her hometown. You want to win in front of your family, your mom, your sister. She's got a big family. And Villanova is a really tough team to play. She means so much to us that we want to get that win for her. And that's important to us. After Saturday, it will be coaches' 700th win, which is a milestone. I've been a part of many of those wins, and just to see her be able to accomplish that in front of her family is going to be just amazing. We're trying to hopefully make that trip very special for her. And we welcome you to the pavilion on the campus of Villanova University, home of the Wildcats. Diggins to Chandwa, Ace turns, goes to the hoop, off the glass, good. Nice job by Ace. I think she's coming along. She had a, a couple of moments where she looked like she could be that beast on the block that we need. Goes back to Chandwa, lays it up and good. Chandwa turns around, 15 foot jumper is good. I only shot one jumper, so I guess that's, that's the difference. I did score a lot on the block. She's a great finesse player too, and I don't want to take that away from her, so we're trying to get her to just be a little bit of both. Kayla Turner looked like she hit her elbow on the floor. She's still down in front of the Villanova bench. Kayla Turner is somebody that when she goes down, you know she's really hurt. She is a very, very tough player. So when she went down, we knew it was something really serious. It was ridiculous. I'm, it, I couldn't bend my arm at all. You know, I really was like, yeah, I'm just going to have to suck it up, <laughs> honestly, and just go out there and, and see what I can do, you know? I just really wanted to be out there. I mean, I don't have that much time left. You know, we had a conversation about a month ago about where she was going and where she was heading, and I felt like she was somebody that had so much more potential than she was playing to. And I think she left the office thinking, okay, I know what I have to do. Uh, this was good for me. And since then, boy, she's been on a great trajectory. She always sees stuff in me that I don't necessarily see in myself all the time. And um, I think it gave me um, a new perspective on everything, and it just, it just got me going a little bit, you know, it being my last year. That's the biggest thing. I think you can be great. And here's what I think you have to do to be great. And I think I'm, I'm never satisfied with what they're doing now because I always want them to get a little bit better. Now King gets it back. Wants to fire a three and away and good. We got a two point ball game. You know, we made a couple of mistakes defensively. They hit a couple of threes. All of a sudden, uh, we go from up 10 to up two. Both of McGraw's staff around her giving their input. I would say that collaboration is the hallmark of our program to look at my assistant coaches and know I've got a great staff, I've got to use these people. What is your opinion? To listen a lot more than to speak. Rebound, rebound. We took a timeout and we ran a certain play for Kayla McBride. She answered the call. High post, Jewel Lloyd has it. Goes left side to K-Mac, 15 foot jumper, good. I had a mismatch and you know I took a, took a shot that I've taken many times so I was pretty confident in that. And Muffet McGraw has won 700 games in her career as a head coach. Whenever I have a big win, the first person I look for is Matt. We have been a team for 35 years, and he's been with me every step of the way, from my first foray into coaching at Archbishop Carroll High School till where we are now. And I don't think either one of us dreamed this was possible. But to be able to share it with someone makes it so much better. Congrats, honey. Proud of you. Thank you. Proud of you both for you. There's not another team in the country that has anyone that I would rather be in the locker room with, win or lose, than you guys. I love this team. It's a big moment for her. 700 is, is a huge milestone in her walk as a coach. And we want to celebrate that and just be funny. Great job. Thank you. Good job. We, we've done the song a couple times when we went to Philly, and I think she gets a kick out of it every time. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, it's a show. <laughs> the theme song starts in West Philadelphia, born and raised. And Coach McGraw is from Philadelphia, so it just happened to be a great uh, time for that.
I love this team because they come out every day ready to go. They're ready to be challenged. I think it's a team that has taken ownership. It, it's their team. It's just a team that I just love being around them on and off the court. You know, the game is over. We're in Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, my hometown. And what could be better than celebrating with a cheesesteak? That is um, steak with uh, American cheese and onion sleeves. We have to go to Pat and Gino's, which coincidentally, two pretty good coaches in women's basketball named Pat and Gino. <laughs> You know, we're in Philadelphia, you've never been there before. This is a chance to see the city and see some of the uh, the things that bring the local flavor. Plain cheese with cheese, one onions on it? No. Nothing? Is Good. there American cheese on that? Actually, yeah. in a little yeah. mayo, little mayo. I'll give it to the side, okay? Oh, okay. What kind of cheese? You know, just to be able to, to pull that game out and then have a little bit of fun at the end of it, kind of, you know, calm the waters and, you know, coach, we, you know, we got through it, you know, next game, and I think that she really liked it. Dude, I got cheese fries. She always loves our chemistry off the court just as much as on the court. She wants us to be together, you know, have that bond off the court, because, I mean, I think it reflects a lot of what we do on the court as well. Even though I'm, I'm injured, there's still other things going on in my life, other things I have to take care of, and I have a job interview coming up, so I had to prepare for that. These are young women that are going through a lot of things in their life. The older ones are looking at job interviews. What am I going to do? What, what's my future going to bring? They're always prepared. It's the kind of kids that we get. I think it's that kind of person that has that determination and that ability to, to refocus, um, no matter what kind of adversity they're going through, to keep seeing what's going to come next just working with the coach and the, the staff here, and they really help you and, and teach you the, uh, the importance of time management and, and being prepared. We charter because it's important for us to have the girls in class the next day. No matter what time we get home, 12.30, 1 o'clock in the morning, they're going to be up and they're going to be at their 8 or 9 o'clock class the next day. That's really important to us. We got back around one. I think I got to bed, give or take, around two. And then uh, I started my full day at 9.30. I'm a management consultant major. My first class of the day was macro. Good morning. Good morning. One of the things I want to do today, we're going to talk about the projects. Coach McGraw even said that before we all come here is you have to commit yourself to a lot of things. Basketball being one of them, but you have to commit yourself to the school and uh, your academics, or, or else you're not going to be playing on the floor. That was involved to really agree with the decision to go into the program. Okay, pretty good. You know, I think it says a lot about our our program and our team in that it's so much more than basketball. And I have some questions that I want you to think about. I have them here on the screen. We are at the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Center. This is where I grew up. This is where it all started for me. This is where I developed into the basketball player I am today. I can remember being here for hours and hours and just playing basketball, playing. I wanted to be like Neil Ivey. I went to go see Ruth Riley. You know, I grew up during their era. I knew what Notre Dame was, and I knew I wanted to go there. This place might not look like the gym at Notre Dame, but it means the same to me, family. So come on, got me doing the jobs he don't even do at home. I was rolling. I try to come as often as I can, and I love when I come back because I feel like my whole family's here. I know everybody. I think you put the salt in. <laughs> I see family all around me, and even with the fans, the fans that we have in Notre Dame now, they supported me when I was in high school. So I feel like I have family all around me because I do. Next place I want to take you is my alma mater, South Bend, Washington High School, where it all started for me as far as when I figured out I really wanted to play basketball at the next level. How you doing? Good. Real good. Good. Good to see nice you. Nice to see you too. I remember working out with the high school girls, and I thought that was so neat that I got to come in here and do that, and I couldn't wait to get in high school. It's kind of weird <laughs> when I walk in here and see a big picture. <laughs> we went to the state championship my freshman year and lost it. I remember I was getting my medal, and I told the lady, we'll be back next year. And we did go back, and we won it this time. 
I think Coach McGraw sat over in that section. I didn't even look at her the whole game. I was so nervous. I ended up having the best game I ever played in high school in front of her. She's special and she's a big part in my development, not only as a basketball player, but she helped me mature so much. She cares about life after basketball, and I think some coaches don't get that. Now as a senior, you know, I owe my development from when I was in college to her. UConn game, our last home game for me and Skyler. It, it was just an exciting feeling, but yet it was sad too as well. So many emotions, the rivalry, the last game, the Big East outright title. Just, just so much going on. Every time we play UConn, it, it's a battle. We each know each other so well. That's why it's, it's so competitive and you know, it's so physical. It's the biggest rivalry in college basketball. And for us, it's all about pride. And they get the signal that we're ready to go. And here's the opening tip off. A true classic. Two great teams opening tip to K-Mac. Takes it down the lane, off the glass, up and in. Notre Dame has got two nothing off the set play. Bounce pass down the on the lane, shot up and good. Three on two. K-Mac all the way to the hoop. Lays it up and in. Mosqueda Lewis shovels one up, got it to go. Oh, hold on the screen. Right. Get it down low, and Dolson takes it to the basket and lays it in. We got behind. We we didn't play well. You know, we didn't shoot the ball well. Two for 16, uh, you know, in the beginning of the game. We couldn't make a shot. Irish having a little bit of trouble getting our offense going. We were happy we were only down five or six. I thought sometimes we pressed a little bit in the beginning of the game, and then when we realized all the pressure was really on them, then uh, we kind of settled in in the second half. Biggest down the lane, all the way to the hoop, shovels it up and in. Turner turns, goes to the hoop, lays it up and in. It's one thing to be out there, but to come off the bench and contribute in the way I, that I did, it was an awesome feeling. Gets in the corner, KT wanted to shoot, now she does on the way, got it. K-Mac goes right back down the lane, puts up the soft floater, good, we're tied at 59. We have a chance to win the game in regulation. K-Mac in the lane, soft jumper is up, no good. We end up with a tie. We're going through the first overtime. We're behind constantly, always behind, always behind. Down low, Tuck shovels it up and in. We're down six with, with less than a minute to go in the game. You know, a lot of people would have hung their heads and said, this one's over. We're not going to win this one. And she makes them both. You know, we, we always think we can find a way to win. <laughs> but I think people really believe that we were going to win the game. Kayla McBride across the midcourt stripe. The Irish down three with the basketball. Fires the shot. Got it! We've done too much to come back to this point. Way to fight back. We're like, now we are not losing this game. Turner got it to a turn. We're down low off the glass. I think that's when everyone just kind of pulled together and, you know, it was just like, we're not losing this game. K Mac around a double screen, comes open, jumper on the way, got it. Physically, we're tired, but mentally, we're going to stay tough and we're going to win this game. Kicks it out to Jewel Lloyd. Off the glass, up and in. I think when you have a team that really believes they're going to win, they find a way to do so. And I think that was the case with our team that night. You know, never stop fighting. I think that's the trademark of this team. They just refuse to quit. They refuse to lose. I think it was just, you know, a deep breath after that. You know, it was a very long game to get this win and just to keep battling and not giving up. I think it just shows, like, the heart that our team has. You know, the excitement and, and everything had gotten to all of us, and then the emotion took over. And we all realized, I think, at the same time that this was it. It, it mattered that we won the game, and it mattered that we won the Big East title all right. But I don't think any of that was going through my head. I was reflecting kind of in that moment. And then it hit me that that was the last time I would be playing in that gym. And I think all the emotions of that came out. 
It just brought tears to my eyes, and I, I just wanted to hug her and, and let her know I loved her. And what a great, great, I mean, unbelievably special experience this has been for all of us. What you saw was Coach and I's relationship. She wasn't just Coach McGraw. She was somebody that I love and care about, and I could tell that she felt the same way about me. It's such a great feeling of achievement and accomplishment. We, we've not just hit our potential, we exceeded our potential. That doesn't happen very often. I think it just shows that we all know that we need each other. You know, without one piece missing, we're not the complete team. To win big games like that, we all have to come together. That's the thing for them. It is always about each other. So when we all were out there sharing the trophy, holding the trophy, getting the pictures, we know that every single person on this team is responsible for what we've accomplished. The fans are still cheering, like everybody's still there. Like nobody turned to leave. I was just so proud of my team for the win, but I was pretty much thinking about the fans and South Bend and the Purcell Pavilion and how that was the last game. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That win for us meant so much. To have that be your last home game is, it's unbelievable. That was, that was just amazing. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen a team overachieve and then just say, no, we're not, we're not giving you this. Oh, Great, job. 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 Great job. I think the most important thing of, of why we've had so much success this year, I think, is because of our confidence in ourselves. I think that we always knew we could do it. Now I think the world is starting to realize that we're, we're a good contender for a national title. Together. One, two, three. Together. Together. Big East champ! Hey! It was just so great to finally go undefeated in the league. You know, it's one of the things that check off on the list. The next thing we want to check off the list is Coach's first Big East tournament. I think it's just so important. I know we won the regular season, but we want to win the tournament. The Funny Irish of Notre Dame have won a Big East first season championship for the first time ever. The next thing we want to check off the list is we want to win a national championship. You know, we've been there twice. Hopefully, third time's a charm. All we can do is try to be the best we can be now. We have another chance, and I think you have to make the most of that opportunity.